Welcome back to the Running Why Mom podcast. I'm your host, Samantha Slinsky, aka the Running Why Mom. Today, I am thrilled to introduce our guest, Jamie Lynn Curley, an entrepreneur who epitomizes the idea of turning dreams into reality. With over a decade of experience in the fashion industry, Jamie transitioned seamlessly into network marketing, where she built a seven-figure big business empire. Now, she's conquering the digital marketing realm while juggling three businesses and laying the groundwork for a fourth. But Jamie's journey isn't just about professional success. It's about empowering women to dream big and pivot careers fearlessly. She's a firm believer that the right mindset and determination, you can have it all. Though sometimes through though sometimes prioritization is key. Jamie is not just about building businesses. She's about building communities and fostering wellness in both body and mind. She authored eBooks on living a healthier and more joyful life and navigating the digital era's income streams, all while being a devoted mother to her three children, including twins. In today's episode, we dive into Jamie's remarkable journey, her passion for helping women discover the entrepreneurial spirit, and her insights into finding balance amidst the chaos of modern day motherhood and entrepreneurship. Welcome, Jamie. Thank you so much for having me, Samantha. I'm excited to be here. Yes, I'm so excited. And we met um, at the um, Women in Influence Luncheon, which was such a fun time back in the fall. So it's been a while um, since we've reconnected, but we follow each other on social media. So I feel like it hasn't been that long. <laughs> right. I know. I love that. <laughs> Um, so to start each episode, to start each episode, we have our wine, wine, and win of the week. This is where we share our favorite bottle of wine or drink, then about something that has been bothering us and celebrate our recent victories. So grab a glass, take a deep breath, and let's get started. So Jamie, what is your W-I-N-E wine of the week? Okay, I'm excited to share this with you because I just five minutes ago got home from a networking event and the, the speaker, her name is Laura Taylor, and she created mango mocktails. I don't know if you've okay. heard of it. No. So it's, you know, her mission was to create this, uh, a social experience where everyone feels welcomed. And the whole evening was about how she started her entrepreneurial journey. And it's a, uh, it's, it's a non-alcoholic drink. So I was like, this is a perfect thing to bring to the podcast. I had a delicious, it was cranberry mimosa and it was so lovely. So <laughs> for a mocktail alternative I'm totally gonna plug mingle uh they have some really great things yeah and I'll have to link that because I'm always looking for we did like dryish January um but oh I feel like it's all about just like having something good to drink so it doesn't matter if there is alcohol or not alcohol in it when you don't want like you know just like straight up juice having a mocktail is like a fun way to kind of have that as an alternative yeah. And that's what her business is about. You absolutely have to check her out. I mean, it's a really cool story and how she came out, came about the business. So uh, it's, it's really cool. Cool. So what is your W-H-I-N-E of the week? Oh my goodness. Where do we even start with that? <laughs> oh, um, so far it's been a great week and I'm just going to be honest, right? I am happy and I'm not whining when the sun is shining. So, you know, here on the East coast, it has been cold and gloomy for like the entire month of January. So that's going to be my complaint. It's just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a, I I just like posted something on Friday and I was like I don't know what's happening I feel like I am so sad and I'm just like not and then so many people responded they're like I feel the same way it's because the sun hasn't been out you know and I'm like yeah I guess we're just not normally I feel like in the winter we can get out a little bit but I feel like it's been raining or just like so gloomy for consistently in in January I agree um so what is your win of the week all right. So this is kind of an interesting one, but my oldest daughter is turning 15 this week. And I know you have little ones. I know your mm -hmm. kiddos are young, but I have just been like, just focusing on the fact that my baby is turning 15 years old. And oh part of me is like, how is that even possible? But then the other part of me is like, I'm so proud of that. And just like, just being a mom is incredible, as you know. And just, I'm, I feel like it's such a win to have like this beautiful, amazing human who is turning 15 and just becoming her own. And it's a really cool thing to see. Oh, that's amazing. I know. I can't imagine the other side of it because I am so in the, in the thick of the toddler, toddlerhood. Um, but I know like everyone that I talk to who has older kids are like, it goes so fast. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I know. It's like, you, you know, you try to soak all of it up, but then it's like mental health wise, you're like, it's okay to not soak it all up. But then I guess yes. when I talk to people who are saying my dead kid is turning 15, I'm like, oh my God, I don't want my, my baby to turn 15 yet. <laughs> it, does, it really flies by. 
Um, So I always like to ask my guests, what is one struggle you've overcome leading to where you are? And what is one thing that you're most proud of in your life? Okay. Um, I feel like the whole struggle thing, I think a lot of women can relate to. And this is something that I I'm always hyping myself up about, and it's it's the comparison game, right? And I remember hearing a quote early on in my entrepreneurial journey is like, comparison is the thief of joy. And just to kind of like layer in, like comparison while you're on the journey is the thief of joy. Like no matter what journey you are on, whether it is parenting or business or whatever it might be, if you could just really soak up the journey that you are personally on, it's so much more enjoyable that way. So, I mean, it's, it's easy to struggle with that sometimes um, in any area of life. And I just, I posted today on my story. I, I don't know if you saw it. It had all these different um, colored circles and mm-hmm. it was like someone's actual day and it was yellow, green, blue, purple, orange. And then it said what you see. And it was just the yellow dot, which maybe is like their highlight of the day. And then it's like what you think their day was. And it was all yellow. And it's like, wow, that is. So that I felt like that just resonated with me so much because you are just seeing the highlights a lot of times of people with social media. So it's so easy to compare. Um, but you are just seeing probably either their like highs or their lows. And you're not really seeing like the boring in betweens, which is like kind of where everything happens, you know, which is it really <laughs> Like the mess that happens in the middle of any you know journey is where all of the the mess happens, but it's also where the beautiful things come from. So mm-hmm. I'm with you yeah. on that. I'm a big fan of social media. You know, it's, it's how I've been able to grow my businesses. But I also do agree that like you have to show like you need to show up authentically. Right. Um, so I, you do a great job of that, and I try, <laughs> yeah. try to do the same. I know. I try because I'll, I'll be like in the middle of a, a messy situation, and I'm like, ah, and I'm like, you know what? maybe I should actually share this because I feel like other people could relate to it. It's not necessarily, you know, some people are weird with social media. I love it as well, obviously, and sharing. Um, But I'm like, I just want people to understand that, like, it would be inauthentic for me to just share all the good stuff that's happening through my day. Because while it is good most days, it's not good all days, you know? One of the hashtags that I used to use when I first started building my brand was authentically imperfect. You know, Mm -hmm. like I'm I'm just going to authentically show up as I am. Sometimes it looks great. Sometimes it doesn't, but it's just truly like it's life. And I I do believe that when you are vulnerable in that way, other people can relate to that more. And then you are able to inspire them to go on and do their own thing too. Right. Yeah. Because if you, if you seem like you are like at a, um, like in a spot that you, that nobody can get to. If you're like this person, every single di- thing that they do, they succeed in and they, they're perfect. And they're, like, oh, well, I'll, I'll never be that. But then it's mm-hmm. like, oh, wait, but they have days like me too. So maybe I could be that. That's kind of the way that I think of it. Um, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah. Um, so the running why, mom, we start off with fitness um, and then kind of run into motherhood and then we'll talk about your businesses. So I'm so excited to get all into that. But first, let's start with fitness. How, how do you stay active? What's your favorite way to stay active? I love to work out. It is like my therapy and also my social hour every single day. Um, I currently, and for the past several years, have been going to a boxing gym. I live in, in Chester County, and I have the most amazing boxing gym, Society Boxing and Fitness, that I go to. And it's a great workout. Before joining that gym, I had never done anything like that before. Um, but it's really fun. It's great. I feel like it's great for like you know empowerment as well. So that's what I do. I, I hit up my local gym with my friends, you know, uh, every day, and it's it's a it's a great way to stay in shape. That's fun. And how do you stay motivated to maintain your fitness routine? You know, health has always been like a non-negotiable for me. It's just always been something that, you know, I I feel better when I move my body mentally, physically, emotionally. So it's one of those things where I have to go to a gym though. During the pandemic, I struggled. And I know some people are able to work out at home and they have that self-motivation. I'm a motivated person, but when it comes to working out, I just can't do it at home. I just, I think I like to be around people. And I also like other people telling me what to do. (laughs) It's highly more likely for me to actually accomplish something if somebody is watching me. I, I totally, again, relate to that as well. It's like the you already are so busy. You're like, you're so busy with your life. And you're like, the last thing I want to do is think about like, how many sets do I have to do? Just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Then I'll like get a good workout. And then the social peer pressure of things is I feel as though something I've always been um, accustomed to where it's like, oh, there's people watching. Like if I'm in my basement, I'll be like, eh, who cares? Let me just yeah. like 
switch the it's fine I'll skip this set and when you're you know around other people you're motivated to do more so that's um you know so great so what struggles do you have to stay healthy and fit um, you know, I think it's just about balance, right? Mm-hmm. I have been really a, a big supporter of like everything in moderation and everything in mm-hmm. balance. You know, I, I, I don't like to deprive myself of anything when it comes to food or whatever. So I just really do it so that I, that I can live a healthy life. You know, I really believe that you pay for your health now or later. Um, mm-hmm. and I just think it's really important to make sure that you nourish your body with the right things and you move your body and you get good quality sleep and all that thing. So health is it's, it's one of my businesses, but it's really one of the things that's always been important to me. Yeah. And can you talk uh, about, I always like to ask my guests what they think their relationship between mental health and physical fitness is for them. You know, like I said, it's going to the gym to me as therapy. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, I just feel like moving my body, you're able to just process so much. And I do think it's really, really important to have that, that mental health piece, um, moving the body. Also, I got a puppy not too long ago, so I like to go outside and walk her and be outside oh. in nature. I think there's like a, an equivalent to, you know, that in mental health as well. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's a nice way to, uh, I always feel again, getting outside is something so important. And to go back to the wide of the week of just not being getting, getting outside. Like we, oh, we try to get outside almost every day, even if it is raining and just January, we, we fell off and, and it really was, was a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so let's get into parenthood. So can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, family? Yeah, so I'm um I'm a I'm a girl mama. I have three <laughs> daughters. My as I mentioned, my oldest is turning 15 and I have 11 year old twin girls. Um so you know it's just I'm married to my high school sweetheart. We've been together for ever in a day. Aww. Um and uh it's fun. We just, you know, it's it's really crazy. Sometimes we look at each other, we're like, are we really doing this? Like, are we really like those are we really adults? You know, we yeah. were two teenagers when we fell in love. And um, so yeah, we uh we we just have a lot of fun together. Um, and they're just like anybody else, like they're the reason why I do what I do. You know, I I, right. I love to be a good role model for them and a good example, you know, for them as well. Yes. And especially having all girls, I'm sure it's just such an amazing thing to see a powerful parent, especially, you know, a female powerful parent, because they know that they can do anything that they put their mind to. Yes. Um, What do you think you were least prepared for in parenthood? Becoming a twin mom. (laughs) Was that a, did you know, like, were you the surprise for twins? It was a surprise. It was a surprise for sure. Um, So that was a shock for us. Um, obviously we had many months to prepare, you know, right. to bring these two babies into our lives, but, um, I just, I didn't know what I didn't know at the time. And, you know, I, I often joked like, you know, I had my one daughter and, um, having one was a piece of cake until you right. bring home two. And I was like, gosh, I wish I really like took advantage of that extra time, you know, when she was sleeping, I would have slept, but, um, it was probably the biggest shock and something I wasn't prepared for, but at the same time, the absolute biggest blessing, you know, um, in in so many ways. Oh, that's awesome. And what do you think that your parenting style is? Hmm. Oh gosh, I don't know. Should we bring my kids in for that one? (laughs) (laughs) You know, I, I really love empowering them and helping them to like learn about life and, you know, they are getting older now. And so I just like to encourage them or in, include them in the conversations and, you know, um, talk like really fun things. And I love to help them dream big and think about things that they could do, you know, for themselves. But um, I would say my parenting style is, um, I, 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 yeah. they, I, yeah. I like to become a cool mom, but I, mm-hmm. I don't really know if they would agree. <laughs> That listen, if that's what your perspective is, then that's what it is, right? You know, I think so. <laughs> um, and what's one piece of advice that you would give to other parents? So I would say that um, let's just go along with a comparison theme, right? Like, do not compare yourself to other parents mm-hmm. and the way that other people you know, um, parent their children. I, it's so easy to fall into that when you are, you know, have young kids and, you know, it's like, oh, how long is your baby sleeping? And how many times are you feeding? And, how, you know, you just, you're, cause you're curious and you want to know, am I doing the right thing? But at the end of the day, I feel like we just need, we know what is right for our family. Mm-hmm. And, you know, especially as they get older and how you start to really like have your children show up in the world, I think just like to not compare, 
Um, don't try and keep up with the Joneses, you know, and yeah. just really like do what you feel is best for you and your family. Yeah. And that's such good advice because it is so true. Like, and, and what works for your family, I always say that it, it won't work for the other family. There's no family that does everything the same exact way. It's just impossible. So, and that's something my husband and I, like once we had our kids and so many people were like, oh, you're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. Or you, you have to do it this way or that way. And then like we, first couple of months of our daughter, we were very overwhelmed and with everything. And then we kind of like looked at each other. We're like, hey, wait, there's like not a rule book for this. Like we can do whatever we want. We're in charge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when it, parenting, I feel like got easier to stop comparing and just do what works for your family. So I definitely agree with all of that. Mm. Um, all right. So let's get into your you as a businesswoman. So can you talk us first through your journey uh, from the fashion industry to network marketing and now into digital marketing? What prompted kind of each transition and how you found your way into each different world? Yeah, absolutely. So I've always been into fashion, you know, ever since I was a young girl, I, I used to have the wallpaper. It was like girls walking down a runway and like in my, mm -hmm. you know, in my elementary teenage be bedroom. Um, so I've always been into fashion and went to school for fashion merchandising, you know, got a job out of, out of college, truly doing what I, I loved. I, I felt so lucky to just kind of land this job. Um, and I loved what I did. I was with, you know, one company for an entire, you know, well over a decade and would have been there forever, but priorities changed for me. Mm -hmm. Right. I became a mom. Um, as I mentioned, I, I live, uh, in Pennsylvania and, uh, my office was in New York city. So I was constantly on the train from Philadelphia to New York all the time or traveling across the country because I, 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 the job that I had, it was a sales role and I was traveling all over the country and I just, my priorities shifted and I wanted to be there for my kids. I will never forget, mm -hmm. you know, um, dropping my oldest daughter off at daycare, you know, and, and, and just really wanting to be there, but also wanting to have a career and wanting mm -hmm. to be able to contribute financially and to, uh, really grow our life. And so, um, I, you know, it was after I had my twins, I was introduced to network marketing to a, a, a wellness company. I was, you know, looking just to change a few things in my, in my nutrition, started the products felt amazing. And I was like, gosh, wow, this is really amazing. Everybody needs to know about this. Right. And just casually shared it with other people for a year or so. I just was like, Hey, you should try this. It's amazing. And just, that's where I learned the power of um, referral marketing and network marketing and word of mouth and how powerful that could be. And it was around the same time of me, like starting to share this journey of this, my, my wellness journey that I had this like aha moment in my business career where I was on a business trip to Rochester, New York. And I was, it was in the middle of November. It was, you know, a blizzard up there. I'm sure. Um, landed in, you know, Rochester, New York, super late at night, jumped into a smoky smoke filled car. This is well before Uber and, um, just had to drive like down this unknown snowy highway to like stay in this hotel night, this hotel for the night. And I thought to myself, like, what am I doing? You know, like I am working so hard for this job. I had already like caught the entrepreneurial bud buzz. And I was like, mm -hmm. I just work as hard for myself. I bet you I can have success. And that was like the one like aha moment for me in my life where I was like, I'm going to work for myself and I'm going to find a way to have it all. You know, it sounds so cliche and listen, there's a lot of prioritizing that has to happen, mm -hmm. but that was really when I was like, I think I can do this thing. So, um, that is what, you know, sparked me into network marketing and, you know, over a decade, spent over a decade in network marketing and just, you know, grew an incredible business with amazing, you know, leaders and, and teammates in it. And that was such a fun journey. Um, and still is, it's still, you know, it still is a business that I have. Um, but that really also, again, just, it, it helped me to realize that the entrepreneurial journey is something that I wanted mm -hmm. to take, um, which has led me into learning more about digital marketing and, and learning more about that space that is just so big. Um, and there are so many incredible opportunities just to kind of be in that, in that space. Yeah. So with digital marketing, because I feel like people know kind of network marketing, but digital marketing is kind of a new thing. So how would you describe that to our listeners for what exactly yeah. that kind of entails? 
So what I think is really amazing about the digital era, and it's like, you know, the, the one ebook that I did write is that there are so many different ways that you can diversify your income in digital marketing. Mm-hmm. There are so many different ways. I mean, blogging, podcasting, affiliate marketing, influencer marketing, there's so many different things that you can do. But because there are so many different things you can do, it's almost so overwhelming, right? Like, mm-hmm. where do I even begin? And so what happened was I personally wanted to launch a social media firm where I wanted to help small businesses and entrepreneurs launch their social media because I feel like over the course of the last 10 years, that's something that I've been able to, to mm-hmm. do um, and to do well that I could share those that experience with others. But I didn't really know how to do that. So I went on a quest to learn and I mm-hmm. just educated myself. I took multiple digital marketing courses to figure out how to do that. And what I found was that there's this whole world in digital marketing where you can create your own digital courses or products or services and, you know, operate there. So mm-hmm. what I do now is I particular, I have a, a, have a suite of products and resources that I use and promote to my clients um, to help aspiring or existing entrepreneurs get their business up and running. So it's for yeah. the person who, you know, I really, really like working with women who have a business idea or want to make more money online, but don't know where to get started. I provide those resources and kind of, and that mentorship along how to do that. Right. My passion truly is helping the woman who wants to career pivot and do something completely different. You know, I've, I've done that a few times now in my, in, you know, the last few decades of my career. And I, I just know how fulfilling that is. So that's really one of my passions is usually the digital resources and courses that I now have to help other women get their own businesses up and running. Yeah. And it's nice to have everything in one place because it is so overwhelming. And it's so funny. I was like, I swear, this is like a weird sign of the universe because I've had, um, I had like stuff on Teachers Pay Teachers for ye- since 2021. I think I posted stuff and then I never like logged back in. This morning I'm sitting at my computer and it's like, you have a sale. And I'm like, a sale on what? What do I have a sale? It's like Teachers Pay Teachers. Someone bought my uh, like thing and I'm I was like, oh my gosh, I don't going to be talking about digital marketing tonight. This is so weird. <laughs> that's amazing. Like that's your passive yeah. income. That's something that you did and you created. And like, it, that's what I think is so cool about it. And that, you know, we oftentimes like focus on, you know, getting a good job and, and going the one path, which is obviously very important. But when you can put on different hats and have different mm-hmm. revenue streams, you know, yeah. to support your life and to support your dreams, like yeah. that is exciting. That is so, so cool to see. Yeah. I was literally, so I think I made like four bucks. I was like, oh my God, I made four dollars. <laughs> like, right? Whatever, you know, imagine more. <laughs> well, I will tell you what, the very first commission that I made um, for my network marketing company um, years and years ago, years ago was $7. And yeah. I was like, well, if I can make $7, I can make 70. If I can make 70, you know, and that's just like, if you have that belief in yourself, then you are going to keep going $4 or whatever. Like you just know that there, you you can do something. I think that's so inspiring. Yeah. And so, so speaking of being so successful in the network marketing, you know, that's a huge achievement. What are some key strategies or maybe principles that you believe actually contributed to the success in that industry? So, you know, in network marketing, and I feel like a lot of what I learned there has transitioned to help me with this new business. And Mm -hmm. that's why I believe so many network marketers are really great at digital marketing is, you know, you have to be like open-minded. You have to just be open-minded to new ways, to new ways, Mm -hmm. to new ways of doing business. And I, you have to be coachable. And I am, like I said, I, I got to go to the gym because I, I need my trainers to yell at me. <laughs> to do. Like, yeah. I am so coachable. If you tell me what to do, if you show me the path to like, to uh, success, and if you tell me how to do it, like I can do it. And right. I feel like something like that is a muscle that you have to work and you, mm-hmm. you work on that a lot in network marketing because there's a lot of learning curves and you ha- there's a lot of new things that you have to learn. Um, and I think also, the journey in network marketing has helped me be, to become the best version of myself um, and to realize that like in order for me to be better at business, like I have to grow myself. And that has really flowed into every area of my life, you know, right. and that I think is so important, you know, to, to, to grow yourself so that you can gr- grow your business, but then your family is able to, and your, your, your people and your family and your friends are able to benefit from that too. Yeah. And I, I agree. Yes, I totally can 
you know, agree with all of that. Um, so balance. Okay. So doing all of that, you're super busy. How do you balance running all these businesses simultaneously while being a mom to three children? Yeah. Um, I think it comes down to organization and time management right? and really being so intentional and protective of your time. You know, we all have the same 24 hours of a day. And, you know, I think that it's so easy to just say, I don't have time and I don't mm-hmm. or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's just about prioritizing. And, mm-hmm. and that's what happens. You know, it's like, uh, there's a lot of juggling pieces and I just really need to find the things that I have to prioritize that are most important right now in terms of business and focus on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then really be able to, you know, be present when I'm doing that and then be present with my family. Another thing I will say is like communication. You know, I have, I have like super cute pictures of, you know, when my children were super small, like sitting at the foot of my desk and I was like trying to learn this thing, like trying yeah. to get it off the ground and they are so young. But even at that young age, I try to communicate with them what I was doing. And mm-hmm. my oldest is old enough to remember me packing my suitcase every Monday night to go be away for four nights in a hotel. She remembers uh... me getting on the train and leaving to go work all the time. And so she, when she, when I came home and I started my business, I mean, I treated it like a job for Mm -hmm. years and I still do, but like, I'm so protective at that time. So I really communicated with my kids and my husband, he was very supportive, but just like, Hey, this is what I'm working on. This is what I need to do. And then we're going to go to the park or then we're going to go do this. And I think that's, so important because otherwise, especially when you're an entrepreneur and you work from home, I mean, you could work 24 seven if you right. were able to. And so it's like having those boundaries and protecting your time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's something that I'm trying to like balance with, like, as my podcast is getting more like this week, I said to my husband, I, I'm like, I, I started this new calendar system in the beginning of the year when, and I didn't like block off time so like this week for example I have four podcasts in a row and then like in January it was like a mess and I was like I'm sorry but like then I figured it out like now I all right I learned from it and then you know I realized I'm gonna do probably one or two a week instead of four a week because that's you know not really managing my time right um but I it is like but me I'm like oh I want to do I want to get all these people on and I want to I want everyone to I want to be available to everyone but it's really hard to be like I need to just wait (laughs) and it will come yeah and especially when you're excited about something like you're 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 doing so many great things and you know you have young kids and a job and your podcast and all these other things Mm -hmm. that you're juggling it's exciting and you want (laughs) to do it all But, but you just have to be like I can't, which I yeah. hate saying that. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so transitioning careers is a huge thing and a go- and a dream slash goal for like so many people. What advice do you have for someone who's considering maybe a career pivot, especially if they're unsure, like where to start, what to do? How can you, how can they learn? Yeah. From that? So I will say like when I transitioned from corporate America to network marketing, you know, this was, again, it was 10 years ago and you know, I just knew in my gut, it was the right thing to do. And I am not a risk taker at all. Mm-hmm. Like I don't take risks. This was the biggest risk of my life, but I right. just, I went all in on me and I had belief in me. And I knew that like, if I worked as hard for myself as I did for the job that I loved, you know, mm-hmm. that I'd be successful. So I think it's like really working on that, like self-belief. I think right. there's, stuff like you have to have the right business plan in place. You have to make sure that like all like the business that you want to launch or the pivot that you are doing is going to financially make sense. You know, I remember having a conversation with my husband. He's like, it's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. You know, in the ki- I'll never forget the conversation with him in the kitchen. Cause he knew that I just needed it. I needed to do something for, I needed to do something different. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, what is the quote? We always underestimate what we can do long-term, but overestimate what we can do Mm short-term, right? Like setting the right boundaries and expectations for yourself and just knowing that you, it's go, it's a long game, you know, it's 
No one is an overnight success. You have to put in the extra work. Um, and finding somebody who's gone before you, you know, I'm <laughs> on like mentorship and just knowing, like, just reaching out to the people who've gone before you and who've done something that you want to do and follow in their footsteps and learn what they did. Yeah. Um, I think that's really, really important. Yeah. And I think people are sometimes scared to do that, like scared to reach out, scared to like not copy someone else, but like do mimic what they're doing. And it's like, that's really how you do it. And then you find the way that works best for you. And again, just like with families, not everyone's going to have the same family life. You're going to have a different business life, even if it's the same and everybody can have, you know, there's enough room for everyone, as I like to say. And I find that anybody that I've asked questions to is like so helpful. No one's like trying to gatekeep anything or be like, um, I'm not talking about that. Um, and I'm the same way. I'm always like, if you need help, like, please let me know because that's the way that I learned was through other yeah. people really. Um, yeah. So, I'm a big supporter of like women supporting women. You yeah. know, I think it has to happen. And that's, I loved that. Um, that luncheon that we went to, um, just being around all those women. It, I, I remember that that was, I I was about six months into my six or seven months into my podcast and everything. And it was like, I wasn't really sure what direction. And I, I really feel like that was such a pivotal day for me where I was like left and like, this is what I want to be around. Like these are, these women are just supporting everyone and, and wanting everyone to succeed and seeing how these women are succeeding is, was just so motivating, um, for just me to work harder. I feel like, and meeting amazing people was such a great outcome of that day. I love that. That was so awesome. I felt like I was sitting with such a celebrity, you know, I, I met you, I didn't even know you and then you're being honored. I mean, it was such a beautiful thing to witness. You were just so humble and, and, and just so gracious. It was, it was really cool to see, yeah. to see that for you. Thank you. Yeah. And I was also like, what there's people, what am I even doing? It was such an imposter syndrome day. I'm like, there's like doctors up here. What did I do? <laughs> but I mean, you know, how, like getting with connecting with women, that's what it's all about. And that's what I'm trying to do. And especially in the area, I find it so, you know, in the tri-state area to just connect with women, which is so mm. exciting. Um, so as if you didn't have enough on your plate, you are going to start a fourth business. Are you allowed to talk about that or any of the foundation you're laying for it? I mean, it's still in the super early phases, but I will say that everything that all of the businesses that I have been a part of have always come from a need and like a pain Mm -hmm. point. Right. And I truly believe that once you, if you have a business idea, once you are able to determine your niche, right? And then more specifically, your target audience, you get to identify like their pains and or their pleasures and how mm-hmm. you can help them. And so I, I can't give any more details <laughs> other than it's going to satisfy a pain point for a past version of myself. Okay. Um, and I'm really, it's, it's something that I'm super passionate about. It's been on my heart for a long time and I'm just really, I'm really excited to launch it, but it's not, if we are not <laughs> even in the talking phases. In that's general. all right. Listen, it's, <laughs> it's got to start somewhere. So that's awesome. Um, to kind of go back just like real quick about, you know, we were kind of talking about pivoting careers and everything. Um, you know, we, we talk about having people dream big. What are, what do you think that you've come across are some common barriers that you deserve, you've observed people prevent to prevent people, especially women from pursuing their entrepreneurship dreams? Like, what do you think mm. the biggest thing women maybe are holding back why they're not doing this? I think mm-hmm. it's the fear of failure. Um, and it is, you know, so it can be debilitating to think of like, well, what if I fail? And what if this life that I've envisioned for myself and my family doesn't happen? Um, so the fear of failure, like hurts my heart so much because I do, I talk to a lot of women who have really great ideas and are so afraid of taking that next step. Um, Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's oftentimes, and I see it a lot in network marketing, people are, um, they quit too soon. You know, Mm -hmm. they just, but be right before they are about to have that success. And I just think, so my answer to that is like, I think consistency and constant, like 
education so that mm-hmm. you are always learning um, and always growing yourself as a person and in business and just being consistent. And until, until you reach that point where you feel like you've found your success. And then guess what? I mean, I've been an entrepreneur for 10 years and I'm still like refining and pivoting and fine tuning. That's part of the journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's not working. It just means that that's just part of the business journey. Yeah, evolve. I think people are scared, like you said, to fail, but also to evolve into something that they don't know what they'll evolve into, which is, you know, like, oh, I could never do that. Or, oh, I could. Well, like, why can't you? You can. If I can, you can. If she can, you can. And that's kind of what I wish every woman knew. Mm. You can just just try it. And I don't know who said it, but somebody said, like, if you're not growing, you're dying. You know, uh, yes, a hundred percent. So true. In, people, in anything. And, and people get stuck. It's it's hard to watch, I think. And you are such a learner, which you that's the way I am. I'm always mm-hmm. like, what can I learn next? How can I? Yes. And some people just don't. And I'm like, you're just going to mm-hmm. not. I don't know. Yeah. I want to like set like, here, just go like learn about what do you like here? Here's an e-course. It's free. Do you, you know, yes. of course, go to Coursera. Just learn something. You're going to because you can't, I don't know. I, I just, I can't, my mind doesn't work that way. I'm with you. I'm all about <laughs> educating when, when yeah. we can. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about your um, ebook, A Beginner's Guide to Diversifying Your Income with Digital Marketing. So what do you hope that uh, readers will gain from reading this? Yeah, you know, I just hope that when somebody reads that, they are mm-hmm. inspired to take that next step, whatever that might be, to do something for themselves. You know, I feel like any anybody that I talk to, I can come up with like two or three really cool business ideas or digital products that they could create. Like that is just something that I just, I see that in people. I, I see what they can do with, they just kind of, like you said, learn something new, learn mm-hmm. some skill that you can apply to a new business idea. So I really, I hope that the person who reads that book is inspired to find a way to create more money online for themselves, if that's a goal of theirs and, or figure out how they can diversify their income mm-hmm. in the digital era. Because we are here in 2024. And let's just face it, absolutely everything is, you know, increasing in price. And I just actually just did a post about this today or yesterday. It was like, if your salary is not increasing, to, uh, like the blueberries and the milk yeah. and the eggs and all the other things are like, what is, what is your plan? Mm-hmm. And so I have pivoted careers. I stepped away from a corporate job, but that's not for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what? To make some extra income to pay for dance or cheerleading or soccer or a family vacation, like that is really cool. And so I love helping people kind of think about that, how they could create a really cool business idea and, and launch it mm-hmm. and create additional income for themselves and their family. Yeah. So what's your, uh, what do you think your favorite way or most rewarding or impactful way to, or program to do digital marketing is what's your favorite one? Um, you know, right now what I'm really enjoying is helping my clients figure out how to create digital products that Mm -hmm. they can, um, turn around and sell. So I'll give you an example, a good friend of mine and one of my clients, um, recently went through a uh, stage three cancer last year and, um, throughout her entire journey, I mean, she, two surgeries, chemo, radiation, all the things she was constantly educating herself on how to thrive mm-hmm. during the process. Right. So all the things, the things she read, mindset, nutrition, movements, everything that she did. And I said to her when she started this, I'm like, girl, you need to write a book about this and Yeah, like, someday, someday. And she, she purchased my course and she wrote a book about her journey That's and awesome. it is incredible to see what she has been able to do. And the people who are buying her book are some of them may be on the similar journey, but there's just so much good stuff there anyway. That's not even just about the cancer journey. So for me, it's like seeing something like that come to fruition and seeing an idea, you know, a, a, a painful experience that she went through. She was able to turn it around and to then go ahead and it, inspire other people. And, you know, she has several other ideas coming. So I just really, it's, it's about helping people kind of think of those ideas and it's mm-hmm. seeing. Seeing the seeing the good in somebody that they might not see in themselves, right. and helping 
my friend and, you know, she's very new to the business world and she's like creating these things and it's so cool to see, but she didn't have that platform, you know, until she took this course and learned it. So it's just really, really cool to see people kind of coming up with good ideas that can make an impact. And here's what I always say, you're further ahead than the person who's behind you. So Mm -hmm. you don't be an expert in anything to think that you need to go out there and like, you don't need to go get any certifications or degrees. You just need to be able to be passionate about something and to be a little bit further ahead than the people who are behind you and you have something to offer. Yeah. And that's something, again, I think people don't realize they think you think you have to have all your ducks in a row and then you can do it. It's like, you're not going to ever have your ducks in a row. Just, just do it, just start it. And then you can figure it out as you go. And I feel like that's Really, so many women and men that I've talked to over the last year have had all of that advice. Like they didn't know what they were doing and they just kind of started it and then they learned as they went. And, um, you know, that's it's been a consistent thing that so many people have said. And I'm like, if everybody could just listen to that, it would be it would be great if you could just do it and then you'll, you know, figure it out. Um, so looking ahead, what trends uh, or developments do you foresee in the field of digital marketing and how do you think? So we're not behind that people can stay ahead because it is rapidly evolving. Like, I feel like it is just like, there's so much happening in in the last couple of years of digital marketing. And it's kind of like, is everything saturated? Like, what do we do? What do you think the best advice for that would be? Yeah, I think there's so much opportunity and I don't think that it will ever be saturated because here's the thing, you know, there are so many different things that people can bring to the table in terms of um, selling something online or educating online. Um, Affiliate marketing, I mean, I think like 87% of brands right now have an affiliate program, which if you're into, like I always joke, I went to school for fashion merchandising. Mm -hmm. That was my major. I was in retail and fashion industry for like 12 years and I would never be able to be a fashion influencer like ever. You know what I mean? Like I think (laughs) I'm I'm nine or 10 years old, you know, every once in a while I kind of look cute, but like, no, it's just not my thing. It's not something that I'm passionate about anymore. Mm -hmm. I love to, I love style, but it's not something that I want to go all in on. However, there are some incredible people out there who are killing it in the fashion niche, right? Yeah. Um, so I think you have to find something that you're extremely passionate about and something that you are good at Mm -hmm. and focus on that and put the blinders on. Don't worry about what other people are doing. Just focus on that. So for me, it's empowering women who want to create additional streams of income online. That Mm -hmm. is what I'm most passionate about, helping people to make money. I mean, I was partnered with a network marketing company for 10 years. I love their products. I love the opportunity so much more. I I loved helping people to make money versus Mm -hmm. coaching them on the nutrition program. It's just what I love. I love to help people in that way. And so you have to find what you're passionate about and what you're good at and just zone in and focus on that. And then secondly, in terms of like where to get started, I mean, there is so much education out there that again, it almost can feel overwhelming. You can Mm -hmm. Google your way through it. It's going to take a lot of time, but I I talk about that in my ebook. You know, it really, the reason I decided to um, sell a course is because it was packaged in this beautiful little box, right? It's a Mm -hmm. beautiful little system that it's a pathway. I like to know where I need to go from here to there. I like to see that journey. Um, And I also feel like it cuts out a lot of time. Mm-hmm. Um, people are able to launch a business much quicker when they, you know, purchase a course or or find right. a find somebody who is who is doing it or who's already done that. Yeah. Um, but I would say don't if you have an idea and you want to get into the digital marketing space, like just don't wait. You know, mm-hmm. there are so many different ways. And you can, you know, blogging and, and podcasting and all of that technically does fall under this digital marketing umbrella. There are so many different ways that you can get your message out. <laughs> Um, okay. So you have given us so much information. Thank you so much. Um, so I have one last question for you. Looking back at your journey so far, what advice would you give to your younger self just starting out in the fashion industry, knowing where you are now? Hmm. I would say to keep going and have belief in yourself. Um, you know, I was in the fashion industry. I was, you know, it's a corporate job and I, you know, wanted to 
keep climbing that ladder. And I just thought like, that's what I needed to do. That was supposed to be my trajectory. Um, and I, you know, was buying the books on how to get a raise and how to get a better job and all those things. And what I didn't realize at the time was that every like step back and every uh, missed opportunity in the corporate world was really just setting me up for the path that I was bound to go down anyway. And so I just feel like that is really, you. everything happens for a reason. And when you're in it, it is so frustrating when you don't get the job or, you know, you, you get overlooked for a position. Um, it can be so frustrating, but I believe so much that that fueled me to look for another way to have a successful career. And it's completely different than what I thought I was going to do when I graduated yeah. from college. And that's such a, that's such a cool thing to look back on as well, to just see like, this is at 18, what I thought I was going to be doing. And here I am nowhere near, but I had to do it to get to where I had to go type of yes. thing. So that's a great story that you have. Yeah. Um, all right. So that is going to bring us to the end of another episode of the running wine mom. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to Jamie Lynn for sharing her journey and invaluable insights with us. Uh, your passion for empowering women to dream big and turn their passions into profitable ventures is truly infectious. From your success in the fashion industry to your remarkable achievements in network marketing and digital marketing, you've shown us that with dedication, resilience, and a willingness to pivot, anything is possible. To our listeners out there, I hope you found Jamie Lynn's story as inspiring as I did. Whether you are a mom juggling multiple businesses or someone dreaming of starting your entrepreneurial journey, remember that you have the power to create the life you desire. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, leaving a review and sharing it. You can also follow me on Instagram at the running wine mom underscore and Jamie Lynn, where can the listeners follow you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram as well at the Taylor made business. I'm on Facebook as well. Jamie Lynn Curley. So um, thank you so much, Samantha, for having me. I really appreciate yeah, it. Thank you. And I'll link all of that. This was such a great and informative conversation, really. Uh, so thank you all so much for joining me today. Remember, you are strong, you are capable, and you are all amazing. Until next time, keep running, keep sipping, and keep embracing the joy of motherhood. Cheers, and I will be back next Tuesday. I, I, I